Hey guys, it's 1.3 step one. Uh, now that we've read a little bit of the play A Raisin in the Sun, it's time to look a little bit deeper into the meaning of the play. Uh, this lesson is about symbolism in A Raisin in the Sun. Our learning objective is students will be able to identify a symbol in the play A Raisin in the Sun in connection to a character. So let's talk about symbolism a little bit. What symbols have you seen in A Raisin in the Sun and so what is the question I want you to have in your mind as we go. Let's take some notes. First of all, what is a symbol? Here's a definition for you. It's something usually tangible. Tangible means something you can touch, see, feel. That represents something else, usually intangible. Intangible is something that you can't touch, see, or feel. So it's something that is solid, that represents something more of a feeling or an idea. Symbolism is the techniques of using, the technique of using symbols, okay? So symbols are all around us. Writers also use them, but we have to watch carefully to find them. What symbols have you noticed so far in the play? Well, before we do that, let's talk about what some common symbols represent. Symbols can mean more than one thing. How about this guy, a crown? Well, it re usually represents wealth, power, right? The king, queen wears a crown. How about this one? A rose usually represents love, but it can also represent danger, right? The thorns, um, the hidden dangers of love, maybe. Um, how about this guy? A snake. A snake can represent um, evil or it can also represent cunning, being wily. Um, it might also represent change, in the way that snakes shed their skin and change. So symbols, common symbols even, can represent more than one thing. How about um, uh, the, the poem that starts our play, right? At the very beginning of the play, before it begins, um, we have the poem, Harlem by Langston Hughes. I'll put it up here so you can actually read it as well, but I just wanna show you that it's in our play. Um, so let's talk about this a little bit because this is where the play gets its title and a key symbol in the play. All right, so the poem itself was written in 1951 and um, it was uh, written about the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was a movement in uh, really more so in the 30s and 40s in New York City that was uh, by and about African Americans um, and really celebrating the cultural um, production of art of African Americans by African Americans. And it is the namesake of A Raisin in the Sun, our play. So the name of the play, A Raisin in the Sun, comes from this poem, Harlem. So as you read, um, think about why this poem might be called Harlem, and then what kind of symbols does Langston Hughes here uh, use in the poem? Um, why can this poem, or what can this poem tell us about the play, A Raisin in the Sun? Here it is. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? It's a short poem and I think it's key before we go any further to talk about some meanings of some of the words that are important. So definitions of keywords, first of all, deferred. Deferred means to put on hold postpone, delay, make you wait. Um, fester means to get infected. Uh, run, wheat, pus. Crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Develop a scab like the coating of a drying dessert, like syrup. Sags, falls. So knowing those helps us understand the poem a little bit better. Um, I think the key one really is deferred, knowing that that means put on hold, delayed. 
So some symbols that Hughes uses in here, first of all, the key symbol, raisin in the sun. And I want you to actually think about what that might represent, what it might signify in the poem. Um, these other things, festering sore, rotten meat, syrup, sweet syrup, heavy load, something that explodes, all of these things, um, Hugh or the speaker of the poem is setting up to compare to a dream deferred or a dream postponed, okay? So the one that I want you to think about um, most is raisin in the sun. So a raisin, of course, is a dried grape, right? If you leave it in the sun, what happens? Well, it dries up. How is that an interesting comparison to a dream that's postponed? How might that symbol, the raisin in the sun, represent a dream postponed? Um, and what makes that interesting? So think about that for a bit and write about it in your notes. The next question is looking at what the poem means and how does it connect to our essential question about dreams put on hold? Well, certainly we have this dream put, it, put on hold right here, um, but I want you to go further. Use the sentence starter. The speaker of Harlem implies or suggests, and then create a view on a dream or on being denied social justice by explain then how this is done. I'm gonna give you a sample and you are welcome to write this down in your notes. The speaker of Harlem implies that dreams put on hold dry up and die by comparing the symbol of a raisin in the sun to a dream deferred. Now we, let's move to the play. What symbols have you seen in the play? This is a key symbol, the plant that mama keeps in her apartment, even though it's barely surviving. It's mentioned multiple times in the play. Um, it's still alive, it's still growing stubbornly, even though it doesn't get enough sun. Mama cares for it every day, she worries about it. Um, and Ruth points it out at the end of the play that she, that she cares about this plant so much. Maybe it connects back to Mama's dream of wanting a house with a garden in the back. Maybe it represents the one of the characters. Maybe it represents the family as a whole. Those are all some options. Some other uh, symbols that we've seen are money, the checks coming tomorrow, fried eggs, damn all the eggs that ever was, Walter says to his wife. The iron and ironing, Ruth spending all her time trying to get those creases out. Books, Benita is often associated with books. She picks them up and leaves when she's upset. She'll talk about them later in the play. And then her guitar, maybe as a symbol for her expression of herself, all the things she flits around from. All right, so what we want you to do now is to go back to Act 1, Scene 1, and find a symbol Hansberry uses. These are some possible symbols. Find a symbol and a quote, and then explain how the symbol appears in the book, and finally, think about what the symbol might represent on a figurative level. Good luck as you work on this, and this is what your mastery check will be about.